Okay, so we left off. We had just cut the mouth on our lovely little animal head here. And now we're going to start uh, doing the butcher. So butcher step is where we're offsetting one plane relative to the other. And this is usually for making teeth or uh, a brow ridge. But if you're going to do the butcher step, you want to label whichever one you think you're doing. And for orientation, we can just steal our information from our original cut the mouth, right? Because we're going to start off in that same location. So let's go steal our butcher chisel and uh, see what we can pass in terms of relevant information. And we'll indent that appropriately. Wrong. There we go. Uh, so let's see. All right, so uh, let's just pass length plus two. Okay. There we go. And uh, we can see that we're cutting it the exact width we want, but is it shaping teeth the way we had expected? And oftentimes the answer is, where's cutting profile? And so now you can see that we've started to overload the machine with a significant amount of lag in its processor. And so that's, that's going to be a problem as we go forward, which we will discuss how to mitigate. Um, in the meantime, we're trying to figure out what we need to do to get teeth to show up the way we wanted. So if we're offsetting in one direction, um, we really want to get this region here to have almost a square cutout profile. And so we're just messing around with the angles that Butcher allows us to do to uh, adjust accordingly. So you can obviously drop the lower offset here. Um, I'm going to switch one of these back to 90 and just get a sense of where we are. So let's change this to 60. And we'll go down to 30 maybe. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is just adjust the butcher height. Um, sorry, the, the butcher position relative to the upper jaw to really define those teeth. And um, that's going to require a shift in probably the width, so plus maybe three. So there, we've got it. And let's take a look at how big our butcher is in some of these directions. So we're taking out a lot for the teeth, uh, almost to the point where it's, it's too extreme. So let's move this down just two for now. And then uh, we can move the butcher up quite a bit. Let's just go the full height. So we're just touching that interface and then we'll make it just a small proportional inset uh, based on the overall height. So let's say height which is 50 and we just want to go two millimeters in so it's actually like height over 25 but it's got to be negative right we're subtracting. There we go. So now we've got something reasonable and it's doing this weird thing where it's affecting the other lip so we can bring our angle back to maybe even 45. And then we soften the chin while defining the teeth. Okay, So you can see that that's there. We get a little bit of variance. And I'd say that's good. So at this point, we just want to make sure that we're not cutting too close to the nostrils. right? So we are, which means we're adding one, which is actually width over 25, right? So we're just a small millimeter. That's all we need to make the teeth. It's not that much. So we can close that off. You can see that butcher step gives us just a subtle indication of teeth. If you don't like that, you can adjust your nostrils up or down or make them smaller and that'll give you a little more room for um, cutting the teeth in the way you'd like. But it's just like a little proportion and if you want you can just you know edge that number a little closer maybe to 20 you get a little more tooth. Okay. So then to translate this over again just like we did with the mouth uh, 
when we cut it, you can uh, simply, oops, let's go the other way, just add your rotate function in, right, that we had before, that was the rotate 90, like that, put that there. And obviously we're going to have to change the inset because that's so far off. So we go back and we look at what we did with our chisel cutter, right? And we translated it um, a good portion outwards, right? So put that in there. And even that isn't enough, right? We don't want to cut that deep. So... I think we're pretty close to length over two is where we want to be, just slightly below. So at that point, um, we can choose that same small divisor that we had over here, where it was length over 20 instead of width over 20. So let me just show you where I got that number. It came from here, right? Because we just want a slight inset. Now, remember, it's going to be proportional to one another, so it'll cut in from the edge different if we start to screw with this model. So let's see how that looks. There we go, we got a little tooth line. And you can see there's a little bit of an interesting thing happening here where it's not lining up with the cutter chisel. And that's because our butcher length um, and our chisel cutter length right, have that plus two. So depending on where they are, we, we need to make sure that that's all the same. So we've got all that working again. I'm going to copy it, paste it. And then we have to make this whole equation negative, right? <laughs> and my guess is we probably want this angle to be negative as well. Okay. So now you can see that there's a lag in the render time. And this means that you're pushing it mathematically about as far as your computer is going to be able to handle. And uh, you can tell by looking at your geometry cache size. So once you get above, what is that, uh, a million, uh, it can be a bit of a problem. And then it'll tell you how many elements are allowable. So I've got 708. Once you hit 10,000, you know, it's, it's time to check your math. So what we're going to do now is press render, right? And so for this computer, it's function six, but you may have some other F6 control button for render. You can always go into the menu and say, okay, in design, I want this, right? Not preview, which is what we're normally functioning in, but just render, okay? And that'll take a little more time to compile the object, but it'll give you a better look at what you're doing. And so at this point, it's always a good time to, you know, start writing some notes. So I'll say, all right, this is Bowman, right? And uh, this module is a practice template for animal heads. Um, you write it parametrically, right? So it is still a work in progress, and then you date it, right? Uh, so today is the 3rd of January, and it is now 2021. And I just write a little note, right? So it's uh, put dot 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 here. And I'll say not fully parametric. And so I don't know if it's pulling up on the video, but you can hear my processor's fans come on. So it's really thinking hard just to generate this model. And uh, it's a pretty good thing. It's uh, simple. Normally, when you're blacksmithing, you'll take these regions here, and you'll do more chamfering with the butcher. You can come in from this 45-degree angle and chamfer it as well. But this is just to get you to understand how the primitives function and interact with one another so that you can really see what you're trying to accomplish. But at this point, uh, you can save, save your file and export it. So we're going to export as STL. And it says it's been modified 
and uh, it's because I've commented the code. And yes, I do. And this would be animal head mark three, right? Because we've added all the details. Save. And then we'll save the file as well as animal head mark three. There it is.